It's 100 Hip Hop and R&B FM Afternoon Jump Off with yours truly, Lorenzo Ice-T Thomas. And uh, welcome to the show. And uh, the show is called uh, Time Will Reveal. I just came up with that. And the reason why <laughs> I've named the show Time Will Reveal is because throughout my career, a lot of times uh, I would make a lot of friends, right? But I would not have any idea what type of occupation my friends had. Everyone <laughs> knew what I did, but I wouldn't take the time out to get to know what they did. So basically now on this platform, I wanna give my friends, my intimate friends, some of my closest friends, the platform to be able to showcase their talents, their abilities, their jobs, and let the world know exactly what they do. So basically, time will reveal. And this man that I have here, I don't know if you could see him yet. I'm not going to put him on the screen. Well, he's done so much in the, 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 let's say, in theater, commercials, and film. He's done it all. And I must say, he can also sing, all right? You may know him from Virginia State University with Blue Denim. You may know him <laughs> from the television series, The Wire. You may know him from the movie Creed. You may also know him from... Of course, the recent movie that I saw, Nomad, with Tika Sumper, Supner, and also he's best known for the movie, Michael Clayton. On the camera, the monitor, with me right now, I welcome my good friend, Christopher Mann. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, my brother. I appreciate that, man. That's that good. And that's what I call an introduction. Bro. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> kind of off the top, you know what I mean? I was looking at my phone, my, my, the password closed. Just as, you know, closed up. Right? I just to, yeah, man, I had it all right there. And I said, oh, man, I didn't, I didn't want to mess up. But um, yeah, funny, and I could have gone on and on with all, all the, <laughs> the things that, have, that you have accomplished. But that is the purpose of this show, my good friend. Um, I, I appreciate I, you, man. I, yeah, man. And it's like, yo, I wish you success in the world man oh i appreciate it. hey that same here she, hey man you you inspired me brother because i've been you know i've been following you ever since state yeah you, you've man. been the man you've been the man ever since then you already know that brother. oh and, well and I, I don't and, know that it, but keep it coming well, like well i'm you. telling you yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you if you don't know take it from me man you, you've been the man for a long time brother. well i guess that's where we should start yeah, I mean, let's, <laughs> let, let's let's start right there because okay. there's so many different places that we're, we're, where we could go. And um, right. the show is Time Will Reveal. So time is going to reveal a lot about oh, the man. people that I'm talking to. <laughs> also, what I found out is it's going to reveal quite a few things about myself. About you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, man, let's yeah. go back to Third Avenue. Let's start right there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Third Avenue. Uh, big shout going out to Virginia State University. We're not going to mention the years. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> See, and he gets it. He understands that because he's a thespian. You know what I mean? You don't want to put those years out there, but yeah. big only shout. A years ago, anyway. But that I know. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> Virginia State University is where me and this gentleman here. Uh, that's where we met. We had yeah. a great time together. Uh, being ball, creative man. beings, yes, we had a yeah. ball. What What are some of your vivid memories of Virginia State University, C man? Well, you know what I think. I think. I mean, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me. The talent shows. Yeah, the singing, yeah. the singing, yeah. the talent shows at, at Virginia State. Man. I mean, right. of course, you know, I mean, there's class. I mean, we, we you know, everybody dealt with class. But yeah, I mean, yeah. We, you're talking about like, you know, the step shows and the homecomings and all that. I mean, I mean you know, you, all of that stuff just, you know, it will never leave you, man. I, right. I remember how, I remember how every, all, all, mostly the females used to gather in Foster Hall, Foster Hall, Mm -hmm. at, at about one o'clock to watch the stories, man. Everybody be sitting in there and watching. <laughs> <Do you remember laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We sit right there in Foster Hall and watch the stories, and we would just kind of watch them with them, but we were waiting yeah. for them to get done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so we could highlight at them. I mean, I kind of paid attention a little bit to the yeah. stories. Yeah. I may yeah. have, you know, uh, watched them a little bit, but and had a, a certain amount of interest because you know. Prior to Virginia State University, 
I went mm -hmm. to a school of the arts. I didn't go to the performing arts, but I went to basically the school that was the rejects for people didn't make to perform in arts in New York City. So <laughs> we, we, we all went there because we didn't make it. There's a lot of politics getting into performing arts. You know what I mean? So, oh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm yeah, it was a lot of politics and I didn't know anybody. So uh, I didn't get into <laughs> Coming to state and having that love for, for theater, um, mm. I possess that. And I think the Kendrick spirits between us, your love for acting, and even at that time, I didn't know, but we had a love for music. Yeah. And the music back then, man, yes. was yes. so good. Yes. Tell me about some of your favorite artists. And I'm going to challenge you. Uh-oh. Thing. Because uh -oh. I've seen some of this karaoke stuff. Yeah, I seen you online, but uh, we're gonna, you we're gonna put C Man on the spot. He's gonna have to dig in the crates and pull out some of this uh, karaoke stuff. But what 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 are some of the artists that um that uh, inspire you so much? I know, but I gotta ask the question because you yeah, from yeah, the yeah, yeah. area, man. Yeah, right, right. So I mean, right, right off the bat, from the time I was like you know six, seven years old, like it was Stylistics and the Delphonics, the Intruders. Um, you can go into, then you go into like the Whispers, the Manhattans, uh, I mean, dude, uh, en Enchantment, I mean, by the time we got to high school, you know, there was a few more groups that were coming in that were, that were you know, had right. that same flavor and that, that same soulful music, man. That, right, that, that, right. Oh, it meant something, though, you know what I mean? It was really good stuff. Yeah. Blue Magic, can't forget yeah. Blue Magic, you know. Mm -hmm. And blue denim, of course. Blue denim. Oh well, blue denim. Oh, blue man, denim man. took the cake. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those that don't know, blue denim, denim, blue denim was the group that we formed, and yes, we used to perform together and challenge yeah. uh, some of the. Uh, some, I mean, we all know Damian Hall went to Virginia State. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Damian Hall right. From the guy, so we used to battle against him. You know, <laughs> and others. But um, what was it about? The, the times where we, we sang on stage and we, we performed that you remember the most? Mm. Uh, it, or it, even it, not on know. stage, maybe outside, standing in front of the cafeteria. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah on like, Third it, Avenue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, just working out those harmonies, man. You know what yes. I mean? And, and, then, and then fighting over who wanted to be the lead on the next one and all right, that kind of right, stuff, man. Right, right, right. I, mean, I, mean, I tried to find a key that I would sound decent in, you know what I mean? Because I, 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 I can carry a tune. Some brothers can't even carry a bag, but I can carry a tune. <laughs> Yeah, you were there, brother. You were, you were yeah. in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. I just stayed right where I knew I could be because then I was also rapping, you know? <laughs> oh, now, hold up, hold up. Now, now, that, now you were talking about somebody's strong point. Oh, Brother, man. I remember, I, I mean, we could, we could, we'd be in a crowd of people and, and, and Ice-T would get out there, man, and, and run a, a, off the top of his head and throw everybody's name in that rap and not miss a beat. Oh, dude, man. Dude, you used, used, used to blow me away with that, dude. Thank I'm you. serious, Thank man. I, 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 I love it. I don't have those skills anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have them. I, I don't have them anymore. I don't know where that, but I think it, the, the influence was my brothers, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. Rush, Imperial, all of those okay. cats. And yeah, right, you know, right, we right. had our battles, the gym jams, the, the right. pub parties. Remember That's those? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, those parties would lead, lead us to having those, uh, those, uh, uh, what was it called? The dark, uh, the Delta Star Search competitions where we would compete in. So right now, right, I want to take a look. Wow. I want to take a look at because I want them to see that you can sing. So right now, I'm gonna okay. play one of your uh, your karaoke clips. I'm not even gonna tell okay. you which one I'm gonna play. I'm just gonna drop yeah. it right here on 100 Hip Hop at RB FM.
100 Hip Hop at RB. Time would reveal is the show. Kind of like my yes, podcast, sir. I could say. And my <laughs> man, you, hey, Chris, I got to tell you, you still got it, my brother. You still got hey, A little something, something. You know, you know I, talk, I, 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 I talked to Jimmy James. You know, he you know, used to sing with us. Right, and right. And he said the same thing. He, he said the same thing. He's like, oh, Yo, you still got it. I was like, right. wow, man. I appreciate that, man. I do, man. You yeah, know? man. I, I remember those days. We had so much fun. Yeah, dude. I don't get to do it as much as I used to, so the pandemic is giving me an excuse to jump in there and do some more. You know what I mean? Right, right. right. Well, you I'm gonna know? drop a number one. I'm, I'm gonna drop another one somewhere within within this show. But okay, I right. want to ask you because I had it when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and I we never really. It's, it's amazing that we never really talked about to one another about our love for acting. Where did that start? Where did that Yo. come from? Uh, it, it actually, it, it was something that, that, that was always in the back of my mind ever since I was a kid. Right. Uh, I mean, if I, you know, I can get to my whole family story, but I, I was the only child who had two older half brothers. So I didn't mm -hmm. grow up with them in the same house. You know what I mean? Wow. Okay. And, and then we, we moved around from, I was really, I was born in Chester, moved to, moved to Detroit, came back, moved to Philly, which is right outside of, you know. Philly. If you say Chester, mm -hmm. you must be saying Philly. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. And then um, family in Chester. Oh, okay. So yeah. you understand. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, so, you know, moving around and, and, and being by myself in a lot of occasions, you know, growing up, TV and film was, was one of my drawbacks was things that just like music. You know what I mean? It, I entertained myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. You know, and I, it, it was my company and, and being an artist because I, you know, I draw, I sing, I do all of that stuff. So it was just, it was a natural, uh, gravitation for me I, I, I you know I gravitated to it naturally and uh I, when I got to high school I, I did some things in high school did some choreography and plays and different things you know played around with it but I never got really serious until I was old enough you know to get into it myself because I you know like another thing too from where I came from my parents didn't have the money to throw out there for me to go and take these classes and get into to that, that the art school like you were like you were referring to so I understood right. exactly where you were coming from with that right right so, so so by the time I you know I got to be a young adult and started working then I could pay for my own classes so I got into classes and I started out with commercial classes then I got into uh, uh, theater classes and, and studying with theater groups and then going to casting directors doing um, uh, on camera class of learning, you know, it's, it's it's a different techniques from stage to 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 uh, film. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. There's the big and then there's the small, the intimate. You know what I mean? So, you know, you had to learn the difference between the two. And I mean, the the acting itself, the the character building, and all that kind of stuff is all the same. But uh, the mediums are different in, in how you project and the way you play to. It. One that would devastate and humble the average person. And while facing his adversities, he showed courage and strength that should be an inspiration to everyone here. He was a fighter. He never gave up. He refused to let the cards that life dealt him force him to be anything less than a, a father, less than a friend and a man. Michael Raymond Clayton, born September 9, 1959, St. Joseph's Hospital, Bronx, New York. Father is NYPD patrolman, Raymond Xavier Clayton. Mother, Alice Mary Clayton. Graduates Washingtonville Central High School, Orange County, New York in 1977. Uh, he was mostly just quiet. I heard him moving around. I gave him another pill about 15 minutes ago. You took it? Deal's a deal, right? Super job, Ellison. So you get to New York, you need tickets to the game or anything, you let me know. I'll do that for sure. Yeah, I see you do your thing in there. I mean, you know, you need to have that yeah, on that your was... resume. I see you in there, but oh, I want to I, I wanna take you back because I think some people may have seen that movie, big film, big film, but you were talking about casting directors, right? And this is when we knew we both were interested yeah. in film. When we ran into each other at an audition, uh, <laughs> laughing already, right? With Pat Moran. In, in Baltimore. In Baltimore. I got to mention Baltimore. Yeah. For, yep, the, for the Wire. One of the greatest television shows of yep. all time, The Wire. All time. And yes. you, my yes, good sir. friend. We're in there. <laughs> let's take a look yeah. and we'll talk more about it. Let's take a look at some of your stuff from The Wire and we'll come back and talk more about that. 
Here's my man, Christopher Mann in The Wire. (laughs) What do you think? Nice colors. You got a platform? Schools. Thought I'd be the education mayor. Well, good luck, Tony. I mean it. Thanks, man. Uh, When do you announce? Next month, I think. You know, get out there early, start raising money. In fact, I thought I'd make the rounds of some people before then, you know? Fill them out. Well, Watkins? Hey, he seems to like me. Well, you really think Odell Watkins is gonna split from the mayor's camp? What you could do is, uh, you know, feel him out on an issue or two. Going that way, it's more subtle, you know? You gotta charm the guy first, talk to him about the issues, and then down the road, see if he's willing to throw sunshine on your ass. I like that. We should do that. We? I was thinking, maybe you would ticket your white ass up with me. Make a run for council president. I mean, me at the top of the ticket, an emerging black leader, handsome, well-spoken. You, the great white hope, the new voice of civic reform. We give Royce a run, man. And what makes you think I'm interested in council president? What the hell else you got going? <laughs> think about it. We're back here at 100 Hip Hop at R&B. Yours truly, Lorenzo Ice T. Thomas, and my man Christopher Man. He's in the building. The Wire, <laughs> one of the biggest shows of all time. And um, yes, yes, yes. yes, I don't know. I guess we were auditioning for the same role. <laughs> I don't know you if know, it was the you mayor at it's that funny. time. <laughs> I don't think it was the mayor. I, well, think you know was, what I, was, I was going, that role was for a police officer. At the, I remember I was trying to get Yours the role was? of... Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going for that. But that day we met together, it was for a police officer yeah. role. And I okay. remember Pat Moran coming to me later on and saying, as you could probably see right now, Lorenzo, mm-hmm. you're good when you lock in. But remember, on television, you have mm-hmm. to make it smaller. So, so you say so you're so big for the camera, which is great for theater, yeah. where most of my training came from theater but when you right. get in there right. you get in that camera and it's right up on you those movements have to be right you right, right they have to be yeah. subtle and, yeah. and that's something yeah. that you perfected my brother talk a little bit about no. that man and the importance uh-huh. of being able because you said something about it later it's basically you're trained and you got to know when to switch it on and switch it off yeah yeah well well for, for film and tv it's always on i mean you 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 Everything is really small, man. I mean, you know, most people, and that, that's where a lot of theater actors have trouble crossing over. Yeah. I mean, the, the ones who, the ones who, the ones who can do it, they, right. they have great careers. They go back and forth like it's no, like no tomorrow. Like Denzel mm-hmm. can do that. You know? Right. He, right. Uh, uh, you know, it's quite a few other actors that I know who can actually do that, which is a great thing. I, but I, I was drawn to, I know, you know, for me, I know it's really weird for me. I, you know, I always say like. Film and TV acting reminds me of like a regular nine to five because everybody's got a job on the set. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You got, you got your crew members, you got the hair and the makeup people, da 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 da, and and you got the script supervisor, the director, first AD, da da. Everybody's working. You know what I mean? So where like like on stage, you know, you got your director and everybody's out. You know, all the actors are, are, are co- co- collaborating together to get this play together. But on the set, everybody's working, and it's like, okay, okay, stop. You know, because you stop and start over again. It's really like work. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, and I, and I and I worked 19 years for a company. You know what I mean? So I I, I had that kind of uh, ingrained in me that kind of you know repetitious work 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 work. So for, for filming TV, it really worked for me. It, it it kind of fit into you know what I what I how I had come up in in the I guess the blue collar world. I guess you would say. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and 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 to be able to put my art into into that same into that that type of uh, lifestyle, if it, it works for me, I love it, man. Right, you know I mean? right, right. And uh, but as far as the the uh, the intimacy and the, and the acting and everything, man, I mean that's that that it kind of came natural. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, mm-hmm. I um when I when you know when I started auditioning and 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 going out and reading for people and 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 being able to. Uh, to, just to to connect with the material, it's it's real natural for me to be small. I, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not a loud person anyway. I like to have right, fun, right? Have a good time. Yeah. You know me personally. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard for me, man. <laughs> it's, it's hard for me to be small. And, and since we're sharing it, uh, sharing this, uh, uh, it is time we reveal, and sometimes it does reveal a little bit more about myself. So I will share this story with you. You'll get it, right? So in Baltimore, I can't remember the name of the movie, right? I don't even know if I shared okay. that, but when you were talking about being big, right? So, and it's this mm-hmm. actor 
who is who is big. He's a big actor, you know, and a lot of things that he did, especially okay. prior to what he's doing now, right? So I had an audition for, mm -hmm. for the lead role, and he wasn't popular at this time. He was just kind of like, mm. you know, coming out, right? So I had okay. an audition for this role, uh, moving right. to Baltimore, got a call back for it, right? Because the character was kind of big. Okay. So it was kind of right. easy for me to play big, right? right? So I got a call back, yeah. end up not getting the role, but I went, a, I went ahead and did some extra work on the set because it was shot in Baltimore, you know, get a paycheck and what have you, and just be on the set, mm -hmm. right? So okay. the person right. that ended up getting the role was Anthony Anderson. Ah, right. And he wow. played opposite Orlando Jones. I can't remember okay. the, name of the movie. We probably have to, you know, we Google that. We'll figure out what the name of the movie was. Yeah. But those were the two stars in the movie. And it was a period piece. Right. OK. So I saw Anthony. I didn't really know him at the time, but he was such a cool dude. So I saw him on the set and I was like, yeah. oh, man. So, you know, but what did you do to get that role? He said, man, right. yo, man, I just went in there and I was me. You know, <laughs> it's like, I was like, and I'm sitting there listening. I'm like, OK, he said, yeah, he said, when I when I walk into that room, I just take command of the room. I, I, I make mm -hmm. the script my mm -hmm. own, you know, and mm -hmm. I add whatever yeah. I can to it, you know. And if you give a right, lot, right. that's good because they can always tell you to bring it down. You know what I mean? Question. So was, yeah. was, was this film a comedy? Um, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has yeah, to, yeah. His character commanded for him to be funny and comedic. Definitely. Right. I, yeah, yeah. I, I was just getting ready to say that that is the one that is the one twist in in, in the film and TV. Mm -hmm. In comedy, big does play well, and in, 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 in most situations, you can play big as long as long as long as, as long as you're being honest to the material. You can right. play big, and, and and it comes off very well in comedy. I, so because drama is a total different thing. I do mostly drama. I mean, right. look, 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 Look at my reel and my I mean, my resume. It's mostly drama. Yeah. You well, most I mean? recently you did a movie with T uh, Tika Supner, and that yeah. movie uh, got some play, but you had to market it and promote it by using social media, right? So we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the film, and I want to see. I want to show the scene of you in the film with Tika. Uh, okay. How has right. social media changed the injury? I mean, the industry, or has it changed it at all? Oh, it's changed it a lot. It's, it's changing a lot. Um, social media. I mean, <laughs> you you can you can get in, you can break into the industry without any training at all if you have a following on social media nowadays. You know, like when we came through, there there was no social media when we came through. Everything was groundwork. You know, we mm -hmm. had to really plug and push it and try to uh -huh. get people to know, to know us. You, to, you were doing mailings. Right. Uh, not now. They they're sending things over the internet. They even auditioning at home with, with like like almost like what we're doing right now. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? So mm -hmm. so so yeah. The social media and 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 the networking that people can do, you know, across the the, the internet, man, is ridiculous. It has changed the game. Uh, it's it's crazy. It's really crazy. Wow. Um, I mean, e e I mean, and, and not even e not even so. It's all technology because like even even with now with the streaming services out now, you know what I mean. People are binge watching whole whole series in in a, in a, in a week True. in a week. True. Sometimes True. a night. If you got if you got ten hours, you can watch a whole series. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you know what and, I mean? And and because of yeah, social so, media yeah. and you marketing and promoting the movie, The Nomads, I was able to check it out. And in fact, let's go ahead and take a look at your scene ah. with Tika. Yeah, let's check it out. Here's my man, Christopher Mann in The Nomads. <laughs> no. Are you freaking kidding? We can barely buy books around here. But the great thing about rugby is that it's a zero equipment game. All the kids need is a ball and a field. Oh, really? That's all you think they need. They also need a safe place to push their boundaries. Yeah, we have a very big football team for that. We do. Too big. We just combined three schools. Two full teams of football players are now screwed. An unfortunate side effect of the closures. Exactly. Which means less opportunities for college and scholarships. A lot of great rugby scholarships out there. I can't even remember when our graduation rate passed 60%. And you're talking scholarships? Let's change that percentage. We hired you to teach, not coach. All right, man. All right. So, so, so I got to ask you, I got to ask you, you know, there's a lot of A-list actors in Hollywood here, you know, who are uh -huh. some of the, you know, who are some of the, some of the actors that you've met 
that have been the nicest and have been the, the ones that have really lend a, a helping hand to you in your career? Oh, wow, man. That's, that's, that's a good question. Um, well, I mean, I, I can, I'll start, you know, with, with you know, the A-lister for, for sure, George Clooney. Mm. He's probably one of, the, one of the coolest people, man. Was he down I mean, to earth? Was he really down to earth? Bro, I can't even, I can't even wow. explain, man. I've, I've actually, I've, I've said it a few times to other people. Like, I remember when I was, I've worked with him twice now. Mm -hmm. I worked with him on Ocean's Eleven and my scene got cut. That, you know what I mean? Oh, that the cutting room yeah, floor. Yeah. But, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's all good. You know what I mean? Because I got. I was, suppo I was supposed to be an enemy, enemy of the state. I had a scene where uh, I was at the. Oh, were you? Yeah, man. Ended up on the cutting. But when I saw the scene, I realized uh -huh. why they had to cut it because the scene was moving. It didn't. It, it wasn't necessary for for me to be in it. So you know, I still I got to check. I got to check. But cutting room hey, floor, man. That's all right. Well, go that's ahead, go right. ahead. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so, no, but so anyway, I got a chance to shoot with him again on Michael Clayton, which was right. great. And um, the second day on the set, and it's funny because we we had a long conversation. We were talking about family and you know history. Just even even with him, like he's I, I ain't going to do too much of personal business, but we rap for a good while, man. Right. And right. The, the, next, the next day on the set, man, my 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 oldest brother passed away, and he was he was oh. in Atlanta. And in between the take, I got, it was funny because we were ad-libbing on a scene. And he said, well, keep the phone on and I'll ask you something about the phone because it was, you know, it was, it was part of the scene wasn't scripted. So we were just playing off the phone and la da da So the phone was on. And when we cut, we took a break and I, I didn't turn it off. My nephew called me because normally the phone would have been off. I didn't know when he got the call. And my nephew called me and told me, hey, yeah, they found, you know, uh, Uncle Phil at home, la da da You know, it was, it was you know, kind of, I mean, it really rocked me. Right. So, during the break, I got one of the PAs to go let them know, hey, look, I might need a couple extra minutes, you know, because of what happened. And uh, George came out to me and he, he, he stopped and said, hey, look, um, he said, I, you know, I, I really feel sorry for you. He said, look, if you want, we can shut the set down and come back and shoot this scene another day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I, bro, I mean, yeah, what else can you say to that? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, no, nobody, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. mad props to, to George Clooney, man. I'm serious. Now, man. now what and year? Tony Gilroy as well, the director. Okay. What year was Michael Clayton? Yeah. Would you say? Uh, that would have to be 06. It was up by when my brother passed in 06. Man. So, so, so Chris, you got to tell me this, we, man. That's when we were shooting. Yeah, you got to tell me mm -hmm. this, man. You've been in this game for a long time, dog. I mean, for a long time. And you and I yeah. have had some you know, some conversations you know, on the phone, right. texting each other, you know, right. and, um, you know, I tell you, don't give up, man. Don't, don't give up. That this is the whole purpose of me doing this, you know, mm. cause I want to reveal, you know, the things that you have done and people and people yeah. will, will, will notice this. What keeps you motivated to stay in this game, my brother? Uh, well, first there's, my belief, my, my, my mental state, I believe, I know this is what I'm called to do. I mean, mm. it's just so nice for me to do it. Right. Two, two, uh, I, I was raising kids during this time, you know, and my, my fact, my youngest will be 21 this year. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how hard it's been, and it's been hard, I don't want them to see me quit. I don't want them to take on the attitude of, okay, I can quit whenever I, things get too tough. Right. So I right. stay out there. That's another reason. That's more fuel that, 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 that goes into my engine. That keeps me moving. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, that's my belief. Uh, you know, I, my, my wife, man, what a support system, man. I mean, you know, she, she's been with me. It, it, there have been times when I've been with, like really on the edge of saying, okay, I'm jumping off of this, this, this train, man. I'm right, tired of riding right. it. And, right. and she, she says, no, you know what I mean? She, she'll, she'll, she'll smack me around. Hey, come mm -hmm. on, brother, wake, wake up now. You know you got it. You know, and but, one thing I, the one thing I can do is trust her. You know what I mean? Right. If I didn't have it, oh, I would know that I didn't have it. Trust well, you, 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 we both know how important it is to have a strong woman by your side, man. Oh, you know, man. so, brother, uh, you brother. know, I, I've got my wife and I've got my daughter. And let me tell you, man, you know, these are, these are happy times. Considering what we're going through right now, you know, Preparation Absolutely. is so Absolutely. important and being prepared for whatever, yes. Le living beneath your means, you know what I mean? And doing whatever you have to do to survive, you know? And, and I mean, you're from Philly, you know? 
you you a fighter, dog. You're gonna fight. Yeah. You know? Come on, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> speaking of speaking of fighting, we want to take a look at this clip that Joe uh, you know. Rocky. Yeah, man. You were in Creed. Cracked orbital bone, two cracked ribs, grade three concussion, ruptured kidney, numerous contusions. Oh. Ruptured kidney, is that? His injuries will heal with rest in time, including the kidney. Now, we shouldn't have to resort to surgery, but we will need to keep him here for at least 48 hours as a precaution. Now, he's uh, still numb from the morphine, but he'll certainly feel it later. Okay. You okay? I, I just got a sip. If you're expecting. No, I'm fine. No, no, seriously. Take it easy, okay? Excuse me, Dr. Ewell. Uh, you have a visitor. Right this way. All right, we're back here. Time will reveal my man, Christopher Mann. Why do I keep saying my man, Christopher Mann? I think I like the way that rolls, you know what I mean? So, uh, man. This, yeah, this is the show, Time will reveal. And, of course, that was a clip of Chris in the movie Creed Two, And I know we talked before about being able to, because when I saw that, on your reel, I, I, I thought about as the actor, you know, where did you have to go in order to understand the, the vocabulary of a doctor? Because they've got, you know, terminology that we don't say every day. So, you know, was there a lot of that in there? I'm not sure. But, you know, you had to go to a different place uh, for playing yeah. a doctor in this role. Yeah, yeah. It's, I actually, fortunately enough, I've actually played maybe two or three doctors before this. And you played a psychiatrist uh, in one film, right? Uh, yeah. Without, with the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the lady with play. the PSD or something like that? Right, well, the, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a long story behind that. But yeah, I, I, I did study for that. I actually didn't get a chance to shoot it. It's a long oh. story behind that one, though, okay. man. It's All a right. long story. Okay. But yeah, but, 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 um, but Those Who Kill was a, a series that was running on, um, I think that was a Netflix series too. And I played mm -hmm. a doctor on there. So I've, I've, I've had to do it. And, and dude, let me tell you, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A different, if it's, it's, it's a above different. your, yeah, it's above your pay grade, but you mm -hmm. got to learn it. <laughs> you know, understand what I'm saying? Right, you know, that, right, that's, right. That's eight, eight, eight to 12 years of studying, brother, that, that you got to try to pretend like you understand it and, and, and fall right in mm -hmm. and, 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 and have, have that bedside manner and the whole nine, man. It's, it's work, brother. Yeah, it's work. I, I can imagine. Really so are is. you finding it? Because it seems as if, you know, you've been in the game for quite, quite some time and you did the movie with, with Tika Supner and then you've had, mm -hmm. you know, Creed too. Are you finding mm -hmm. it easier to find work nowadays? Uh, you know, it, you know it, that's a that's a very good question. I, you know, I'm I'm at a point where um, I know that they trust me to do the work, mm -hmm. but I think I'm at I'm at an area I'm at a, at a place now where they're steady workers that 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 the go tos, okay, mm -hmm. and in order to get work on that level, there has to be a, a gap. Uh, opening for you because these people like people are working steadily most most actors will work until you know they are they are they are on a, in a wheelchair and the whole nine they'll work forever so wow. once you get to well yeah so once you get to a level where you're actually trying to break through where the, the steady work is because what happens is a lot, of, a lot of times when i audition now uh i'm, I'm auditioning for roles that have an offer out for the, the people that you normally see all the time the quote unquote actors you see all the time mm -hmm. so unless they turn those roles down you know most of the time those auditions are just routine to make sure they got somebody that can fill in the space in case they don't, you know, they don't get, uh, you know, one of the offer only to take the role. Mm -hmm. right. And that, that's, yeah. It, that, it, it, it's interesting you say that because when you were talking, it kind of reminded me of a couple of auditions where, that I had and, and uh, a role here or two and, you know, some films that, that, I, that, w that I was in, but some roles I didn't get because of my height. You know, because I was too tall mm. for the mm -hmm. rest of the people mm. in that that were in the in the scene. So therefore, I, I would come happen. across as if I'm overpowering them because of yeah. me being tall. Even though I'm I'm slim, I'm tall. And if the mm -hmm. actor is five four and they're the lead <laughs> power, 
I, I, I ain't go, I'm not going to get the role. I know a couple of times right. casting directors say, hey, you're not going to get it because, you know, you're a little too tall. Do, do, you, do you find that that's an issue or do you find that because we know in the 90s, Wesley Snipes was like killing it. You know, the yeah, dark skinned yeah. brothers had their run, you know, and the, and that and then the light skinned brothers had their run. So do you feel as if there is some type of prejudice in the industry where it comes to getting roles or, or getting cast for roles to whereas complexion is is what matters? You know, I talked about height, but now is it because of your complexion? You know, are you, you get you're too light, you're too dark, Ooh. you're not dark enough. What what is the industry saying in reference to that? Or well, you know, I, it is that that's that. I mean, it's all speculation on my end because I'm not in the room when they're talking. You know, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know what they're thinking or what they're saying. Right. But I do. Um, uh, it's funny you mentioned that the, the light the light skin brothers had their 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 turn, but not, I I I I don't really recall a time where everywhere you looked up, it was a lot of light skin brothers getting work. Okay. I mean, I'm, okay. I try. I try to go back. I try to go back in history. That, I mean, that, I know. I know Sydney that might be my musical James brain. Dunn. That might be my musical brain that, kicking that, in. Yeah, now, yeah. be sure and Christopher Williams. It was hot. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Right, the barge and all of them. Yeah, you know yeah, I'm yeah. I think a lot of people get the music industry mixed up with the acting industry, and I don't think it's ever been quite, quite like that. I mean, mm, like you said, you can go back to Sydney Portier. Bill Cosby. I mean, you know, you, you can. I mean, you could just run through a, a long list of actors right. who are not really like here and that, that that were working for a long time. Maybe Harry Belafonte was maybe the the lightest one, or um, yeah, and, yeah, and, 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 and of course, you know, he, he or uh, James he, L. Jones, James Earl yeah. Jones. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah, those two early on. And yeah, this, and, and this, and then uh, uh, not not City Boy, but um, Harry Belafonte gave up his career for civil rights. Right. You know, I mean, once, right. once he started, once he started on the civil rights thing, he pretty much got blackballed, and he just stepped back and just he just fought for you know for for civil rights, which was an honorable thing, man. I mean, he's you know, much, you know, it's mad respect for for Harry Belafonte, man. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, I do think the industry doesn't know how to deal with light skinned men. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I think I think I think the ladies do have a little a little easier time getting work than we do. Uh, and when it comes to complexion, light light skin, light skin that females, they do seem seem to get a lot more work than the, the males do. Right, um, right. I mean, like you think about the Cosby Show. See, the Cosby Show was it was Bill Cosby and, and Malcolm Jamal Warner, but all the daughters were light skin, mm. except, except except for except for the youngest daughter. You know what I mean? Rudy, right, right, right. Yeah, 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 I'm just saying. You know what I mean? If you, if you look at a lot of a lot of, a lot of shows you see that you'll see you know a a a a, a, a brown complected ma a, a husband mm -hmm. with a lighter complected white i mean you see it all the time right you see it all right. the time you know what i mean so it, it, uh, and, and it's funny because now when you watch a lot of television commercials you'll see a lot of interracial couples you know mm -hmm. in these commercials it's, it's interesting but you played a role in this movie loving that talked mm. a lot about race. We want to take a look at a clip right here. You know how I feel about your scene in, in Loving Man. Uh, and with some, you had a, quite a few scenes, but there's one of them that I love. Let's take a look at Christopher Mann in Loving. Thank you. That was my boy, Christopher Mann, and yeah. Loving. And let me tell you, Chris, that movie did not get the credit that it deserved. I'm so disappointed that more people didn't see it, yeah. you know? Um, like, imagine, yeah, yeah. If it imagine if it would have come out on Netflix while we were going through this pandemic. Oh, oh man. goodness. Yeah. Imagine. I mean, even if yeah. it was on Netflix right now, I don't know. We got to check. 
We might need yeah. to pull that up. I think I think I think it's still on Amazon. Um, and um, I think I forgot how much it is. You got to rent it, you know. Mm-hmm. Story, but I think right. I think it's still on Amazon. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, tell yeah. me what it was like playing. It's an amazing that. film. Man. Yeah. Well, tell me what it was like playing in, in that movie, my brother. Oh man, that was uh, that was great. That was a great experience, man. I mean, that was you know, it's funny. A lot of times, like. Like we, we talk about the auditioning process and you know you know the struggle and the, the waiting mm-hmm. to get the part. Sometimes right, right. when part, sometimes when parts are meant for you, you can't walk away from them. Mm. And that was one that that was one of them. That wow, was, I couldn't walk away from it because originally the way it was brought to me was a it was a low budget independent film. Da da da. It's like and it's shooting in Virginia. You might have to drive down a lot. So I was like, well, I'm gonna lose money on that one. So I don't know. If I, I wasn't really interested at first. So really? I, and, uh, wow. Okay. I was. I mean, because I didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. You know, mm-hmm. they, like still, they said it was low budget. So I'm thinking, talking about 125 hours a day. You know, I got to drive all the way to Virginia and back and forth and burn my gas and everything. I'm going to lose out. I mean, so right. it's like sometimes, sometimes, the the you know, you you, you want the credit and you want to do the work, but if if, if, you, if it's going to put you in the hole and you got a family at home, you got to try to you know bring pay the bills on you. That's know, right. Like, yeah, That's I'm, right. It may, not, it may not be worth me doing this job. So anyway. Uh, my agent called me and said, "Hey, look, they want you to put yourself on tape. You know, and they, they don't because the first thing they wanted me to come to Virginia. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to do that." And they said, "Well, I said, all right, I put myself on tape." They got back to her and said, they, "Oh, they love you. Uh, they want to know if you would come to Virginia for a callback." Mm-hmm. So I'm like, "Oh man, but it's still and I just for the callback, right? Low budget? <laughs> Is it still low budget?" I was like, she <laughs> said, "Yeah." I was like, uh. "So she said, well, that they said that you can put you get you can uh, they'll do a Skype callback with you and you can read with them on Skype." Okay, okay, so, okay. Right. all right. Right. So, but but here and here's the crazy part, right? So, uh, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, who are these people? So I, you know, I, I stand in that. Let me go on the internet and see if I can find anything out about this project. So I go on the IMDb and find out that the movie was supposed to have been done, you know, maybe a year or so before that. Mm-hmm. And originally, Scorsese's name was on it. Wow. So I'm like, oh. wait a minute. Oh. I said, I said, Oh no! So I said, "Wait a minute! This 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 is a low budget." You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So so then I look up the look up, I look up Jeff Nichols and I saw some history. I was like, "This dude is this this is an accomplished director." I was like, "Wait a minute! Hold on! Something's not right here." So I'm, I'm really I'm tripping out. So I so now I got to do the callback. So now I'm like, "Okay, I, I got to blow this away." Now because you know this this could be an opportunity. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This, this mm-hmm. is not just a low budget piece that that you may not ever see any any daylight. So I'm like, "Okay." So I do the reading for him. And he says, "Hey, yeah, yeah. I think you do. I think you'd be great with us, man. Uh, only thing we want you to do now, if you can, if you don't mind coming down, coming down, so we can meet you in person." So you know, I almost jumped in the car right after. Right, right, after right. Meeting, right. You know what I mean? But I had to yeah. play it cool. Oh yeah, I think I think I think I could do that. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I played it. So mm-hmm. I went down, and, and when I got there, I, uh, Ruth Nega had just flown in from England. Uh, she was there. I met her, and the, met met Jeff and a couple of the cast members, man, and. Uh, like I said, I couldn't walk away from it because I originally I wasn't going to do it. They wanted right. me to come down. I didn't want to go down. You know what I mean? But it, it, it just it came to me. It went, and it wouldn't leave until until, you, until the thing was done. I mean, so some things some things are meant for you, man. Right. Regardless. Yeah. You know what I mean. Well, I, I definitely enjoyed the movie. I watched it. I'm supporting oh. you, brother, all the time. What do you got coming up next, man? Uh ooh, okay. I'm, I uh, can I say it? I guess I can. Yeah. Um, if you can't, uh, don't worry about it. I understand. I get it. Well, there's a series that I worked on uh, this past fall that actually, they actually completed uh, the whole season. Okay. And I don't, I'm not sure if I can mention the name. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. I know they're coming on, they're going to be on, uh, they, I just read it online. Oh, you know, it's, 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 it's actually, yeah, I can tell you. It's called, it's called the, uh, the Right Stuff. I forgot because I just saw uh, some articles online that they're going to be. Is Vanessa Williams in it? The Right Stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, no. Okay. All right. Wishful thinking. You can play things. opposite of Vanessa Williams. Oh, I know your wife is around. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> calm yourself. Calm yourself. Calm yeah, yourself. man. Well, listen, my brother. Uh, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> And, Yo, man, I appreciate you having me. Man, man. I, I'm so glad that we've linked up and we've been comu- communicating more over the past year or so. So, man, That's it, true. That's it, right. it, when, man, when your brothers, it doesn't matter how long you may not, you know, communicate, you can pick up right where you man. left off. You know what I mean? Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. but you're going to have to leave us mm-hmm. with a song. Oh. So, let's check out my man. 
And if you don't know my man's work, Christopher Mann goes to his IMDB page. He gets work. He's got credits. He's got credits like crazy. Check him out. He's going to leave us with some karaoke. All right. Until next time, Christopher Mann, I'm Lorenzo Thomas, 100 Hip Hop and R&B FM. The show is Time Will Reveal. Until wow. next time. Thank you, Take us away, Chris. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a spot.